All right. God bless everyone. Uh, I got an interesting little topic tonight. I don't even know where to start. I like had a whole thing planned out and then I've been kind of like just doing more research more or less for like two hours straight because I just don't really know how to put it all together. I mean, I've known this for a long time and I've uh, made sense of it a long time ago when I was just doing it myself. But when it comes to like trying to present it to, uh, you know, everyone else, it's, I just want to be certain. Of, I don't know. Uh, anyways, I'm going to talk about the lost tribes of Israel. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to assert the idea uh, that I believe is the truth, that they're the Europeans. Um, now, first I'm going to do a, a lot from the Bible and go into some definitions. This is probably going to be a long one, so uh, let me just put that out there. Uh, yeah, first I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to go over some other basic stuff afterwards. Um, but yeah, so the prophecy in um, Genesis 21.12 where it says, In Isaac shall thy seed be called. This is, um, you know, actually first let me just go ahead and state this. Because I said it in my other video, but I'm not, it's not like, it wasn't a topic specifically about this. So you can do your own research. I don't really agree with some of these people on doctrine and stuff like that, but they've done, they do really good work and they have good teachings. But you can look up uh, Pastor Eli James um, and also his website. He's got a really, really good slideshow, super long slideshow. It'll take you hours to go through all seven parts, but it's the migration series for the 12, uh, or the 12 tribes of Israel. Yeah. And, um, or also the Lost Tribes of Israel, I might be called. But it's at uh, Anglo-Saxon Israel or something like that. Just Google it or something and Google Pastor Eli James. Um, and then also Dr. Wesley Swift and uh, Bertrand Compare, B-E-R-T-R-A-N-D, uh, Compare, C-O-M-P-A-R-E-T. Um, also, I don't really... I think this person needs to denounce their... The name that they use because they might just be an occultist but there's this uh woman on youtube that does uh some pretty decent work honestly i just i think that she might be an occultist because her name is rosette de la cruz which reminds me of rosicrucians which i'm pretty sure is exactly what it's alluding to but if you look up uh, rosette de la cruz um on youtube she's got some pretty good work as far as research of the 12 tribes of israel where they actually go in and show you the stuff, right? I'm not too tech savvy. I don't have a good setup. I don't have a good desk or anything. Maybe one day I'll show you guys my research on the web. But um, until then, this is, this is all you got, me talking to a camera. So, uh, yeah, you know, and, and oh, I'll, also another really important one. Uh, Joseph Dumond, D-U-M-O-N-D. Just look up Joseph Dumond, 10 Lost Tribes of Israel. And he does like a three and a half hour lecture on um where he just uses the british encyclopedia to go over how and why the lost tribes of israel are the european nation states or you know that they were the ancestors of modern day europe um so yeah so genesis twenty one twelve, and isaac shall thy seed be called okay and then romans uh nine seven as well um is it would be the second witness and that says uh it's paul talking and he says nor are they all children because they are the seed of abraham but in isaac your seed shall be called okay so like remember when jesus rebukes the pharisees he says though ye are the seed of abraham ye are of your father the devil that's because these uh the lineage got corrupted um, I'm not doing this topic about serpent seed, but go look up serpent seed because there's a reason why uh, Christ the Messiah said that ye are of your father the devil, right? Um, it's because I believe literally it's not it's not him being figurative or anything like that. Um, so yeah, the seed got corrupted, and like Esau married in 
the Canaanite tribes, you know, that which are just like the Hittites and uh, the Jebusites and the Girgashites and the, you know, all those giant uh, tribes that I believe were like the Nephilim uh, hybrids and stuff like that, um, you know, just giants and stuff like that. So the Edomites are a people that hate us today. Uh, go look up the Kalergi plan if you haven't done your research into that. But let me just stick to the topic at hand here, which is sharing my understanding of this, right? But it's I could expand on this issue for three, four hours, you know, just rambling about it and, and all the, the proof and all the stuff going on about it, you know, and get into the conspiracy stuff too. But anyways... So I've got uh, these. There's two verses right there that say that in thy seed, in Isaac shall thy seed be called, right? And this is in the, in the Word of God. Um, so Isaac, when you hear the term Anglo-Saxon, um, Saxon is Sac son, like son of Isaac, right? Which is derived from originally in the in the Babylonian and the uh, you know the Assyrian uh, captivities. We lost our identity. You can go throughout the Bible and you can see in a lot of the book of the prophets. And I believe also in the book of Moses, it said, if we don't obey, then this will happen and that'll happen. And that'll happen. And I don't have the verses on hand right now, but you can go look and it, and it says we'll lose our identity and that our name will be forgotten among the nations and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so like uh, the word uh, Scythian, right? Is what we were called by the um, Babylonians, right? The old, old Iraq or Iran, or I don't know exactly where it was, but uh, it was the Babylonian terminology for us. And um, one of the definitions is uh, the Scythians, which are also known as the Saka, Sake, Sake, uh, Isakuzai, um, were a large group of. Iranian Eurasian nomads who were mentioned by the literate people surrounding them as inhabiting large areas in central Eurasian steppes from about the 9th century BC until the 1st century BC. So just to touch on that, the Assyrian captivity started about the 8th or 9th century BC. Um, and then the Babylonian captivity started about, I don't know if it was... 600 BC or 550 BC, something like that. Um, but some people say that the Babylonian captivity was 400 years, and and that thing we just read said that they were um, at the Eurasian steppes from 9th century BC until about 1st century BC. There's so much that I could talk on this that I don't have sourced properly right now, so. <laughs> I'm going to try to just gloss over everything that I should be going in much, much, much detail with. But, um, yeah, like, like when the, like the Israelites were deported first and then when the, when Judah and Benjamin were in Babylon, they, uh, they allegedly fled to the north, right? Which would be like the Balkans were one route that we took, right? And the Anglo-Saxons, the, the Anglos were from the Angles, which were around the Caucasus Mountains, right? And another route that we took uh, was west through the Aegean, you know, through Italy, Greece, uh, Spain, and then all the way up north into Ireland and stuff like that. And we we went through and made a bunch of different nations. Um, and uh, I don't know, there's so much to be said. I'm, I'm jumping around already. But let me get into the word here. Um, so the word Gentile uh, in the Hebrew, like in the Old Testament, is uh, the Hebrew word 1471, and it means a foreign nation. Uh, this is from the Strong's. Uh, figuratively, a troop of animals or a flight of locusts, or I guess literally Gentile, heathen, nation, people. Okay? Um, and then that word in the Greek, right, is, uh, the, is the word... Uh, 1,484, and it says ethnos, which is a race, as of the same habit. An example, a tribe, specifically a foreign or non-Jewish one, usually by implication pagan, and then the same definition of Gentile, heathen, uh, Gentile, comma, heathen, nation, or people. 
I think it's funny that in the Greek terminology it's talking about ethnos, which is just a race, and it says a foreign or non-Jewish one in the Greek. I, I wonder why it would say that instead of non-Greek one, right? That's just something to point out. So I'm half Greek and half Scottish. Um, my mother did hours and hours of research one time before I was into the, the Word of God, before I believed it. I also prefer to use the word or just the terminology, the Word of God instead of the Bible, because I believe, you know, there are books like Jasher, Jubilee, um, the apocryphal texts that were removed from the 1611 King James and the 1560 Geneva Bible that used to be in there. I believe that there's many texts that are inspired by the Word of God. If you doubt me, go look at the research I did on one and two Ezra's, where I tried to prove with, you know, two or three witnesses from the Word of God using just the Bible, um, just the Bible, where I proved that one and two Ezra's should still be included in the Canaan, even though they're deemed Deuteron uh, Deuter Deutero canonical texts now. Um, and then a lot of the pseudepigraphal texts as well, I believe, are inspired. Um, now, I'd have to go through them myself, prove them one by one, right? So right now, I just take them at face value, but I think this is really important. There's prophecies that say that a lot of the stuff will be locked up or, or you know, stored away until the latter days, um, and then knowledge shall be increased on the earth and will be going to and fro, everything like that. Uh, all right, back to the topic at hand. So I pointed out these two words. Specifically because there's another uh, word Gentile used in the Strong's, um, which is talking about the word Greek. And it's in three verses in the New Testament, but in the Strong's it's, it's Gentile. It's translated from Gentile, but it's in the KJV it says Greek. Okay, now this translation is from the Greek word 1672, which says... Hell, you know what? Let me read this one, this one verse first, which is John 7:35. Now, it's talking about Jesus, and it says, um, "Then the Jews said among themselves, Where does he intend to go, that we shall not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion?" among the Greeks and teach the Greeks. So this word is translated to Greeks, which it's just basically another word for Gentile. Um, but in the Greek, in the Greek, this word is 1672, which it's a Helen or a Grecian or inhabitant of Hellas, which the Hellenistic people were the Greeks at that, at that time. Um, by extension, a Greek-speaking person, especially a non-Jew, which is just a non-Judean, which is mainly of the tribe of Judah. But you have to remember, Judeans were also the Canaanite tribes that stayed in there, the Hittites and the Jebusites. And also, I believe there was Midianites and Moabites and stuff like that that were living in Judah when they were worshiping the, the pagan stuff, when they had the wicked kings. So important to take note of that right but usually it when it says jew it's usually referring to of judah but not always so just remember that however this word 1672 is from 1671 now when we look at 1671 it says of uncertain affinity hellas or greece a country of europe so of uncertain affinity so if we Figure out, I mean, I'm sure you guys know what affinity is, but I always, I always like kind of know what a word is, but I always like to get the exact definition, right? And affinity is like a relationship by alliance or a relationship or an alliance more specifically by marriage, but not always, right? So this is, and it says of uncertain affinity, okay? So it's a Grecian or inhabitants of Hellas, by extension, a Greek-speaking person, especially a non-Judah, from the word that says, of an uncertain affinity, of an uncertain alliance, okay, right? Uncertain alliance, which is usually by marriage, which would usually insinuate that they're the brethren of them, or something along those lines, 
right? And then it also says Greece, a country of Europe. Um, so the the key that I want to go back to in John 7:35, though, is it says, does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What does it mean by that word dispersion? Okay. Well, now we go into the Greek word 1290 in the Strong's, and it's diaspora from 1289. But first, the definition for 1290, dispersion. An example, the Israelite resident in Gentile countries which are scattered abroad, or more specifically, converted Israelites. So, that's a big deal right there. Um, where does he intend to go that we shall not find him? Does he intend to go through the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? Does he intend to go to the Israelite residents in Gentile countries? And this word countries is also, is also like land, like in uh, Ezekiel 36, 19, right? Because we're talking about the dispersion here. So I have to get to my second witness, which would be Ezekiel 36, 19, where it says, So I scattered them among the nations. I'm sorry, yeah, because the word, the Greek word, um, was 1290. And then we go to the dispersion. I don't actually have the word from the Hebrew, but I looked it up and it was corresponding with dispersion or dispersed rather. Um, and it says, so I scattered them among the nations and they were dispersed throughout the countries. I judged them according to their ways and their deeds. This is talking about when, when wicked Israel was happening and they were banishing out Israel or this one specifically is talking about the renewal of Israel, but it's talking about before the renewal when they were banished out and sent away. But it says, So I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed throughout the countries. Well, the countries, the word there is Eretz, which is very, it's kind of vague, but it's, it means earth. Um, at large or partitively a land. It's, it's 776 in the Hebrew, which is either a country, uh, nations, field, ground, land, the world. I dispersed them among the lands, right? When it, when it said to Abraham that thy seed will be, uh, you know, the founder of many great nations, think of all the European nations. Think of South Africa, Australia, think of Canada, think of the United States, right? I mean, the, the Caucasians that are the Europeans are the seed of Abraham and they are of Jacob Israel. And this is proven throughout many, many different ways. There's a lot of subgroups that think that, you know, it's the Indians or it's the Spanish or it's the African Americans. And they like to insinuate that all white people are Edomites and were of the devil. Now, I rebuke these claims because Esau and Jacob were brothers of the same mother and the same father. Okay. Now, when you look at the Caucasians of Europe, right, like myself, and then you look at someone who I believe are the Edomites, right? Which would be the people who run the world and the people in all the positions of power and media. And let's just stick with my country, the United States. Okay. So if you look at those people, they are of the same, they are of a similar breed as us, right? But they look very different. Um, when you go and you look at ancient cave paintings of the Canaanite tribes um, in Palestine and along, along those lands and stuff like that. There's a bunch of cave paintings and they have uh, hooked noses, right? To say, to you know, I think you guys can get what I'm trying to infer or whatever here. Um, but basically the, the Kalergi plan is a plan by those people to exterminate um my people, right? Now, let's go back to the Bible here, okay? Now, Paul, in Romans 11, 11, 1, I say then, has God cast away his people? Certainly not, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. 
Now, the Hebrew Israelites that assert that the Africans are the true seed of Israel, which I rebuke, and this isn't about any kind of race thing or anything like that, because there is, you can be grafted into Israel if you just adopt the customs and the ways, and anyone can have life, you know, the Messiah came specifically for Judah, Benjamin, and the lost tribes of Israel, but he also came for all the sinners in the world, for them to all repent. It says all throughout Revelation, all through the book of the prophets, go read, go watch my video on the the deep dive into prophecy with four witnesses from Mika, Matthew, um, Ezra's, and either Revelation or Isaiah. I think it's Isaiah. But um, you know, it talks about the hundred forty four thousand Revelation, but it also talks about a multitude from all the nations that are worshiping the Most High, right? I mean, I believe that we are my people are the Adamites, right? I believe that. I might lose a lot of you with this one here, but I believe that my people are the Adamites. Ha Adam means people of a ruddy complexion, which is ruddy like to show blood in the face, right? There's really only one kind of people that we know do that the way that I assume to be so. But anyways, I believe that Adam, you go look at Genesis 1 and there's a creation of man. You look at Genesis 2. There's also a creation of man, okay? And and that creation of man in Genesis 2 is a creation of Adam and Eve, right? Oh, I'm sorry, really quick. Before I start going off on this whole tangent, let me just go to Romans. My second witness here um, is Romans 9. Uh, sorry, Romans 9. Uh, Sorry, I'm talking about Paul, 9, 2 through 5. Uh, that I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my countrymen, according to the flesh, his brothers and his race, his flesh, who are Israelites, to whom per, per, uh, pertain the adoption, the glory of the covenants, the giving of the law, service of God, and the promises of whom are the fathers, and from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came, who is over all the eternal blessed God. Amen. I actually like, that was from the King James. I actually like the uh, translation from the NIV for this one, which it says, I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Their, theirs is the adoption to sonship. Theirs is the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. Okay, so I believe that, um, that's my second witness there to 11.1. We all know that Paul was a Roman, right? I mean, it, it he got, he asked to talk to Caesar or the governor, the Roman governor or whatever it was in Acts and in, uh, in Romans. I mean, it's very, 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 very clear throughout the New Testament that Paul was a Roman, okay? Roman over in Italy, okay? The Italians, the Greeks, these were all part of the dispersion, okay? They're the lost tribes of Israel. Uh, I believe they're still being run by Edomites, you know, to this day, which are... It's, it's Esau's seed. You know, he married into the Hittites. And I always forget the exact ones that he married into, but it's, you guys know who the Canaanite tribes are. He married into the Canaanite tribes, um, which I think were the Nephilim. Um, and also another thing I wanted to point out is, yeah, the, so Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, there's two different creations of man to my understanding. Um and one thing that I wanted to talk about was I went through the Bible and or the Word of God rather and um, I looked up the word man um, in the Strong's and there was like man there was like uh,
Hold on. One second. I'm sorry. So. Yeah, so for the word man. Let us make man, Genesis 126, let us make man in our image. That is the Hebrew word 120. Genesis 2.23, because she was taken out of man, the Hebrew word 376. Uh, Exodus 12.16, save that which every man must eat, the Hebrew word 5,315. Exodus 16.16, .16, an omer for every man, uh, 1,538, according to so-and-so. Exodus 24.14, if any man, Hebrew word 1,167, have matters to do, etc. Uh, Leviticus 12.2, conceived seed, born a man, child. Hebrew word 2,145. Um, Leviticus 15.33, of the men and the women, uh, that's the word men, 2,145. Deuteronomy 22, that which pertaineth, I don't have the exact verse, just chapter 22. That which pertaineth to a man, oh, it's, yeah, you know, the man should not wear that which pertaineth to a woman and so forth. Pertaineth to a man, uh, the word 1397. Um, 1 Samuel 11, uh, the, the word man in that verse is 582. 1 Samuel 2022, the word man in that verse is 5958. Uh, 2 Samuel 334, the verse there, the man is uh, alluding to 1,121. In Isaiah, man, 1,201. Uh, Isaiah again, man, 935. In Daniel, the word man, the Hebrew word 1,400. That's in Daniel 2.25 and uh, 5.11. And in Daniel 2.10, the word man is 606. So... It's a lot of different Hebrew words for the word man. So when we see man in the Bible, right, which is the Bible, that's exactly what it is. It's not necessarily the word of God. I've been explaining to you guys on my channel the entire time that the English language does not do the Hebrew language justice. Back when they had the Hebrew language, they were, they could only talk in their experiences with like the five senses or something like that. They didn't have the, um, Oh, what's that called? The uh, the lexicon, not the lexicon. Um, wherever they have the consonants in place, or they have the ver, they have the vowels written in to the to the consonants or whatever, and then also that thing with the dots, the Marius Latius. I don't, I don't have no idea what I'm talking about, but they didn't used to have. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna drop that. Let's get back to my my points here on the important stuff okay um, so you guys see what I'm saying there I believe that the serpent seed is still on the earth today um, I believe that it wants to wipe out the seed of Israel um, but and I believe that it will succeed in wiping out most of the seed of Israel however there's gonna be a remnant and no weapon against us shall prosper so repent the kingdom is near uh, make a, the most important thing for you to do is not watch YouTube videos about conspiracies, not look at your YouTube or your Facebook conspiracy groups. It's it's not doing all this stuff. It's repenting, turning away from sin, living in holiness, which you can find that you know guidelines for that in Torah. Even though we're not necessarily under the law, I still try to be as holy as possible by obeying Torah, but I'm not considered under the law, right? I I was considering for a long time to circumcise myself because I am Greek and I'm not, you know, I'm half Greek, half Scottish, I'm not circumcised. Um, and then I saw a scripture where it says Barnabas, though uncircumcised, has still not compelled, has not been compelled to be circumcised. And that was t uh, Paul talking about Barnabas when he was blaming Peter for, you know, being afraid to eat with the Gentiles when the when the Jewish, you know, diehards came of the old traditions or something like that. Um, so, sorry, I'm scatterbrained. I'm, I'm getting all off topic here. Um, so, yeah, okay. So, also Romans 3.9.
right? Because I, I wanted to go into that word Gentile to explain to you guys that this is, it's talking about the dispersion of the, the Greeks or the Gentiles. Like there's two different words for Gentiles, right? And one is like heathen or pagans or people, you know, etc. And another is talking more about the, the Gentiles that are the Hellens or the Grecians or the of un uncertain affinities, the Gentiles that are of an uncertain affinities, the Gentiles that are of an uncertain alliance, uh, which is likely an alliance through some kind of marriage or some kind of maybe blood bond or something like that. It's right. It says of an uncertain one. Um, so and then I went into the dispersion. Um, and then did I go into Ezekiel? Sorry, I think I have the wrong thing listed here but oh yeah so so those other names right sake sucka right which is what the persians called us the babylonians called us we called ourselves the sake s-a-c-a-e and then also s-a-k-a-e but the sucka is what the persians called us the skiths or the scythians is what the babylonians called us and then the sake is the, it was the latin name for us which we eventually call ourselves but that that fulfills the prophecy right there right like the hebrews or the indians don't necessarily have these things right another thing um that i wanted to point out was there's a lot of prophecies about how oh yeah so ezekiel uh 2023 20, also i raised my hand and an oath to those in the wilderness that i would scatter them among the gentiles and disperse them throughout the countries and that word Gentiles there is different than the word, um, like there was, there's 1672, which is the unique word, which is only used in John 735, Romans 39, and 1 Corinthians 1032. And then all the other word for Gentile in the, in the Hebrew, or I'm sorry, in the Greek is, um, 1484, which is just a race, uh, as of the same habit, an example, a tribe, specifically foreign or non-Jewish one usually by implication pagan so like scatter them among the pagans among the heathen among the heathen nations the heathen people because it says gentile heathen nation people you know comma 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 so yeah ethnos another thing too we would think ethnos would be like it says a race right that'd probably be where we get ethnicity from in our english language um but anyway so yeah like when it says in 2023 ezekiel also i raised my hand in an oath to those in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the Gentiles and disperse them throughout the countries. You know, like countries means land. I went over what the dispersion was. That's specifically the Israelites, right? And then when we talk about um, the, the dispersion, the dispersion of the Greeks, like said in John 7:35, it's specifically an example. The Israelite resident in, or the convert, either the converted Israelite resident or the Israelite resident in gentile countries which are scattered abroad right um very very interesting right and then 1289 dispersion or dispersed means uh to sow throughout figuratively distribute in foreign lands or scatter abroad right so specifically talking about the israelites here in these verses romans um three nine it says because i always need two or three witnesses right especially if i'm going to make claims as big as these right romans three nine it says, what then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. I wonder why it's talking about these guys, right? Because we would know that the pagan nations, you know, like anyone, you know, like the, the Chinese, they worship like dragons and, you know, the Aztecs, they got Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent and stuff like that. And they were doing blood sacrifice, the child sacrifices, the Mayans and the Indians and stuff like that. Now, we know that our people have been worse than all of those, right? Because it says that we became worse than all of them in our in our pagan ways, right? But we would know that all the other nations that were actually heathen would have been guilty of these things, right? But it says specifically, what then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. Well, this is, like I said, the English language doesn't do the Hebrew or, or the Greek justice. Jews is a kind of like a false translation of the word Judeans, which most likely means of Judah, of the tribe of Judah. But it's also Judeans, which would be like, I'm a Floridian, right? 
I can be old, young, male, female, uh, you know, Hispanic, black, white. I can be anything if I'm a Floridian, right? So Judeans is what usually that's, that word is usually meaning. But in this case, I think it's talking about Judah and the Greeks, which is Judah and the dispersed Gentiles of the residents of Israel in Gentile countries. That would be the proper translation there instead of just saying Greeks. And they are all under sin. So charge both Judah and we'll just say the lost tribes of Israel that they are all under sin. Um, and then also 1 Corinthians 10.32, um, which and then, I'll, and then I'm going to move on. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10.32. Sorry, wrong page. Okay. Uh, yep. 1 Corinthians 10.32, it says, Give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God. And so all three of these verses in the New Testament, I think there might be four in total in the New Testament where it uses this word, the Greek word 1672, and that's it. Those are the only words. Um, so, and then all the other ones I'm saying are the Gentiles differently. It's talking about the pagans and, and the heathen. Um, so, let me go back to... I want to go to, uh, like it talks about, it talks about Israel when, when we get scattered and everything like that. It talks about that we will be built up again, right? But also it says if we don't obey the, the next time, that will be, it'll be seven times worse than, than the first time or whatever, right? And it also says that our seed will be like very small and, how do I say it? it okay, so, um, Deuteronomy 4.27, the Lord will scatter you among the peoples and you will be left few in number among the nations where the Lord drives you. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily the right translation, but you will be left few in number. I've gone through basically 80% of the book of the prophets. The only ones that I haven't read are the long ones, uh, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah. Those are I'm pretty sure there's, those are the only ones. I'll go back through and look at them. But a lot of them, like, I think Mika talks about the, you know, they're just being a remnant for us and all the nations coming after us. It talks about our seed being small um, in the end times, right? Because most of the book of the prophets are referring to the end times. I've come to that revelation myself. Most of them, they do talk about the time in Jerusalem and stuff when we're being ran out. But it, it also, most of them will talk about both. They talk about the end times as well. It talks about the coming day of the Lord will be, and then it says when the sun will go dark and the moon will go, you know, red as blood. Most of these book of the prophets are talking about the time in Revelation in the, in the New Testament. So, and when it's talking about that time, it's talking about the seed of Israel being, um, you know, low, basically. And you look at the United States, the birth uh, the birth rate of the Caucasians are, it's the lowest among any kind of peoples in the United States. Um, and in Europe, I believe that they also have very low birth rates for the Caucasians in Europe. One thing I wanted to point out is, um, you know, the Africans, like we just read that verse where it said you'll be few in number. There's many other verses that say that, um, you know, do, do the work yourself. But basically, you know, the popula population of Africa that's more or less, it's generally one type of people, right? It's uh, 1.2 billion, right? The population of China, it's basically one people, uh, 1.26 billion. Population of India, 1 billion, right? Um, I thought we used to be 330 million population, but right now it says the United States is 280,000. I don't know if that's wrong or what this website is, but... Um, yeah, I mean, if we're 280,000, you know, I, how, how many of that is, is Caucasian? You know, is it half? Uh, you know, maybe, maybe half, honestly. Might, it might be less than half. I think I read something where we're now a minority, so maybe it's like 30%. But we'll just say half, you know, 140 million, you know, um, Europe has, most of the countries in Europe are very, like, small in population, but, the entire, you know, continent, it's got 740 million people in Europe, but how many of those people, you know, is, is 75, it's 
I'd, I'd say per maybe three fourths of those people are Caucasian. At this point, it might be much, much less because we know London, it's completely, uh, you know, more or less Muslim. And like I said, this isn't a, this isn't a, a race thing. This is, I believe that we were created and sent here to teach other nations to worship the Most High. I went into this in another video. The word for, um, at, or in Genesis 2, it talks about there was no man to till the ground, so then they created Adam. Well, there was already a man that was created, so what does it mean there was no man to till the ground? We know the word of God doesn't contradict itself. So one of the definitions for till um, in the Hebrew, in the Strong's, is worshiper. Okay, it's bond servant or it's servant, right? So it's like servant, worshiper, bond servant, we assume would be of the Most High, right? And that's why they created Adam. In our image, in whose image? Ooh, I shouldn't get into this, but I'll just say it. You know, Jesus says he's the Alpha and the Omega. That would mean the first and the last. Well, the first would insinuate a beginning, um, right? If you go to the apocryphal texts, or maybe they're pseudepigraphal, I don't know what they are, but it's, um, is it the Gospel of Bartholomew? I'm not sure, but it talks about um, how... Jesus commands in his res after his resurrection he commands Satan to come out of the, the pit he's bound up or something like that and he says to Bartholomew okay you can go talk to him he can't he can't hurt you I'm here you know he has to obey you under my authority and Bartholomew asks he talks to him and one of the I don't know if it's the Latin or the Greek translation it's there's like three different translations one of them is like Russian one's Latin one's Greek or something like that and one of the translations it says Jesus was the created first and then me and then the Archangel Michael, and then Gabriel, Uriel, etc. Right? And there's only one other translation that say that, because a lot of these ones are like fragmented and stuff like that, because they were either part of the Dead Sea Scrolls or the Nag Hammadi or something like that, and some of them got burned up, or they're just, I don't know. You know, obviously they want to hide the truth to a degree, but, um, you know, Jesus says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. That insinuates that the first and the last. That insinuates a beginning, right? We know that the everlasting God is eternal. Right. Um, in Isaiah 9, 6, um, like the King James translation says, I, I don't even need I already have it memorized. But the King James translation says to us, a son was given um, my uh, wonderful counselor. Mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. OK, well, that's very. That's very deceptive. Right. Because you can go to the Alexander Harkavy Bible. Right, which is a which is a Hebrew. It's a Bible written in Hebrew, but also translated in English. And that one in Isaiah nine six, it says, "To us a son was given, wonderful counselor of the everlasting Father, of the mighty God, the Prince of Peace." So that's very different than the everlasting Father, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace being the same thing. But when it says of the everlasting father or of the everlasting of the everlasting father of the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, that's the Alexander Harkavy translation. And then the King James says, you know, everlasting, it doesn't say the, it doesn't say of anything. It just says to us, the son was giving yada, 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 everlasting father, mighty God, Prince of Peace. It's very misleading. Right. So I believe that Jesus was the first creation and. Um, in heaven, not like first creation, like born, like in heaven, like, you know, when Satan says he was made by fire and that's why he didn't want to worship man, you know, what is, I don't know, you know, like in John, it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, you know, that's with the, with the father. He was the first one with the father. All things that he has done were shown to him by the father. I'm getting completely off topic here. Um, <laughs> I guess, uh, you know, I, I'm basically done, but. I had so much more to say, but, um, yeah, Leviticus 26, 17, um, it says, those who hate you shall, well, it says, I will set my face against you and you shall be defeated by your enemies. Those who hate you shall reign over you and you shall flee when no one pursues you. Those who hate you shall reign over you. Well, who hates us? The Edomites, right? The people that run the world today, that run the media, that run, you know, that are all the kings and queens, the seed of the serpent, right? That has been corrupted. Um, also Leviticus, uh, 
26, 34, it says, Then the land shall enjoy its Sabbath as long as it lies desolate, and you are in your enemy's land. Okay? Also, verse 36 in chapter 26 says, And as for those of you who are left, I will send faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies. Okay? Also in 39, it says, And those of you who are left shall waste away, and there is iniquity in your enemies' lands. Well, we all know that the USA is modern-day Babylon, right? I mean, it's Mystery Babylon in Revelation. If you haven't come to that discernment, you know, look look it up for yourself. Pray about it. This is the discernment I've come to, is that Mystery Babylon is the United States. And um, America actually means land of the snakes, which if you go look at like 1500s maps and stuff, there was it was like the land of the red haired giants, um, which were the Nephilim. Um, yeah, so it's just uh, I don't know. It's America. I think it's Ameriku or something like that. America, but like Ameriku, Ameriku. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like America. But Q U E America America kind of like that, and it's supposed to be uh, supposed to be translated to like Land of the Snakes or something like that. I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna be ranting, so let me just end this video here. God bless everyone. I didn't really touch on everything that I wanted to touch on per se, but I did. Uh, I did, you know, go over most of what I was trying to say. So. God bless everyone. Uh, I'm going to put like one article. Oh, one thing I want to say too is like Josephus says, there are but two tribes in Asia and Europe subject to the Romans, while the ten tribes are beyond the Euphrates till now in an immense multitude and not to be estimated, um, estimated by numbers. Um, that's talking about before they got to the, that's either talking about while they were traveling up the Balkans or whatever. And then also I believe that Zarajuda left Ferez, left Ferez's line and lineage, and that's Zara Judah and maybe the tribe of Dan as well, maybe more with the Phoenicians, I'm not sure, but that's when they traveled to, you know, Italy, which would be Rome. They made the Trojan King line, uh, Sicily, uh, Sardinia, rulers of Dan, right? The tribe of Dan, Sardinia, that translates to rulers of Dan or, uh, something kings of dan i think it's rulers of dan or i'm almost positive uh the greeks had already been conquered if you go look at the book of jasher the israelites had already conquered the greeks who were of the sons of noah um the macedonians that were there first they ended up giving up all their pagan ways and the israel the sons of israel jacob israel didn't kill the macedonians because they gave up all their pagan ways and adapt adopted all the ways of the, the israelites um, that's in the book of Jasher. Go look up that for yourself. But anyways, Zara Judah, I believe, kept on going. This is after the Egyptian, uh, captivity. Kept on going. Uh, and then they made the Iberian per Peninsula, right? Which is, uh, uh, Iberian, which is Eber or Hebrew, right? The Hebrew Peninsula or Iberian, something. So they went up to, uh, Zara Judah, remember, was the one who had the red, the red thing tied around his wrist because his wrist came out first when he was being born. But then his wrist got pulled back in by Ferez and Ferez came back first. So when you look at Ireland and its flag or whatever, its original flag was the red fist. It's because Zara Judah founded Ireland first. So like I said, I don't have all the source information that I should have for this video. But I just wanted to kind of touch on this information. and. Uh, it's just so in depth. I mean, like, look in, look into it yourselves. Like, you have to diligently seek this, right? And, and seek the Lord your God. Love God. Fear God, too, right? For Proverbs 1 7, you know, fearing God is the beginning of knowledge or the beginning of wisdom. All right. God bless everyone. I'm out.